Give your kids opportunities to find out what they like to do, appetites, as well as what they're good at, aptitudes. Increasingly, I think the genetics is about the aptitudes, finding what we like to do, because if you like to do it, you're probably going to be pretty good at it. And then if you're good at it, you like to do it more. And then you do it more and more. And it's a virtuous cycle. As opposed to coming in from the outside and saying, this is what you will be. Because as a parent, often it's projection. It's something the parent wanted to do and didn't do. Ballet or whatever it is, or sports. One of the areas I studied when I came to England in 1994 and started this very large twin study of 15,000 pairs of young twins from birth, and we followed them now all the way through 21 years of age. When they got into school, I decided it would be important to, scu to study school-related traits like educational achievement, something which hadn't been studied before. And to my surprise, we found that Tested educational achievement, how well kids do at school, is more heritable than most things. It's about 60% heritable. That means of the differences between how those kids did on these educational achievement tests, about 70% of the differences, we call it variance, could be accounted for by inherited DNA differences. So that means parents and schools don't have these systematic effects. So don't blame the parents don't blame the kids, and we shouldn't blame the teachers. I just think everyone's a winner if we personalize education, and as parents I think it's important that we think the same way about our kids. And if you recognize and respect individual differences, the idea of having a universal, a national curriculum, which we have in, in, in England, where these are the things kids have to learn, and you're instructing them. Instruction means basically instruere, to shove in. And if you're shoving in this national curriculum, well, it seems to me ridiculous. And I think it's a very liberating message for parents and for teachers to say that we're in a relationship. And it's a large part of our lives. And we should make it as pleasant as we can because it doesn't make a difference anyway. So you, you might as well relax, enjoy it, and part of that enjoyment is watching your children become who they are genetically. I do think it's important to recognize and respect the differences in our children, and there's a famous saying that kind of ties this together, that parents are environmentalists, until they have more than one child. So with the first child, you can say your, your daughter's very shy. If you ask parents, why is your daughter shy? They give you one of two answers, invariably. One answer is, my child's shy because we didn't go out much when, we, when she was young. The other answer you get, just as often, is my child's shy because we went out too much when she was young. And that's the problem with environmental explanations. They can explain anything. That's not good. You don't want a hypothesis that can explain anything. Then when you have a second child, environment has a tough time explaining why kids in the same family are so different. Genetics doesn't, because your children are 50% similar genetically, but they're 50% different. So genetics predicts that your second child will not be as shy. And then when you see that, you say, I didn't do that. We either went out a lot or we didn't go out a lot. I didn't make them that different. So. I think having more than one child really shows parents just how different children are genetically. And we ought to respect that, we'll recognize it, respect it, and enjoy it to a greater extent.